Hello, brothers and sisters. Today, we have a wonderful topic to talk about. We are going to talk about my favorite person in the whole universe and beyond. We are going to talk about Jesus and who he is. To explore a little bit who Jesus is, we are going to talk about seven points uh, that is important for us to know about Jesus. Is The first one is that Jesus is Savior. What does that mean? That means that his very identity, his very uh, name, Jesus, means God saves. And he saves us from what? God is Savior because he saves us from evil. Particularly, we saves, he saves us from the evil that is within our heart, from sin. He came to the earth to save that was, that was lost, and that is you and me. He is Savior. In the Gospel of Matthew, it says he will save his people from their sins. That's why his name will be called Jesus. And also, his name, Jesus, has great power, power to save in the face of evil. We can always pray just by saying the name of Jesus. He has tremendous power. And in the, in the Acts of the Apostle, St. Peter, I believe, is the one that says there is no other name given to men under heaven except the name of Jesus, by which we are to be saved. Of course, I was paraphrasing. It actually says there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And he's referring to Jesus Christ, that it is through his name that we receive salvation, salvation from evil, particularly salvation from that evil that lives within us, which is human sin. <clears throat> so that is the first identity of Jesus, that he is Savior. And he is not only a Savior, but the only, the one and only Savior of the world. There is no other name. There is no other Savior. Only Jesus can save us from sin and can save us from evil. The second point is that Jesus Christ is the anointed one, that was, that was his name, Christ means anointed one or Messiah. What, what does that mean to be anointed? It means that Jesus Christ in his sacred humanity has received the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That is the power of God to carry out his mission and to carry out everything that had to do his salvation, the salvation of the world. He carried it out in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was very intimately related to the mission of Jesus, beginning with his incarnation. He came into the world. He was formed in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary's womb, and he became incarnate through the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. And then at baptism, he received this anointed. When he was baptized by, jo by, by John at the Jordan River, he received this anointing of the Holy Spirit to begin his public ministry. He carried out his public ministry, his preaching, his healing, his resurrecting the people from the dead, his delivering people from evil and sin and sickness. He carried out his public ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit through his sacred humanity, but in the power of the Holy Spirit with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, which is the power of God himself. <clears throat> so that is the second point about Jesus, that he is the anointed one, the Messiah, the Messiah promised to Israel, the hope of Israel and the one who was to come. Now, the third point is that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This comes from the Old Testament, from the revelation given by God to the, Israel, to the Israelites, to the Jewish people, that he was going to save the people from their sins through this mysterious image of the suffering servant. Now, in the Old Testament, the suffering servant is identified with the people of Israel. But Jesus Christ, being a son of Israel and being the, the heir of, of all the promises and all the prophecies from the from prophets, uh, he is the, let's say, the personification of the suffering servant, the, the one that was going to give his life as a ransom for his people. 
the one that through his suffering and through his self-sacrifice was going to earn for his people life and forgiveness of their sins. That is from the prophecy of Isaiah in chapter 53, the, the suffering servant, one of the, the four uh, songs of the servant of the Lord. And then he is the Lamb of God. John pointed him out in person. When Jesus was passing by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And we see also this image of the Lamb of God in the people of Israel in the Passover um, Supper, which was one of the highest feasts, probably the highest feast of the people of Israel, the Passover, when they celebrated the passing uh, from, from Egypt into the promised land by through the sacrifice of the lamb that whose blood was uh, smeared on the dintel and the columns of the doors uh, to prevent the angel of death from entering into that house in a way to spare the children of Israel from the angel of death from dying. And that is the image that Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of Sacrifice, the Lamb that was going to be sacrificed on that night for the salvation of the children of Israel. And not only sacrificed, but also he was going to be consumed. He was going to be eaten by the children of Israel in that same night of the first Passover when they, fl the, the, when they flew, the, the way, when they left Egypt behind. Uh, so Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And now in the new covenant is the same thing. He has been sacrificed. Jesus is our Paschal Lamb that has been sacrificed for our salvation. And he also is the Lamb that we are supposed to consume, to eat in the Eucharist. That is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and, and that takes away my sins and your sins. That is the only way that we can get rid of our sins if we give them to the Lamb of God in confession and also when we surrender our lives to him and we accept this redemption that he has worked for us by giving up his life for our salvation. So that is the third point that Jesus the, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The fourth point, I'm a little lost here, is that Jesus is the son of Mary. That means that Jesus was born in history, that he was born into a human family, and that he had a human mother. This we, we want to point out that Mary is not only the mother of the humanity of Jesus, but she is truly the mother of God. Why? Because in Jesus Christ, there are no two persons. There's only one person. Jesus has a human body. He has a human heart. He has human soul. He and, and he is also at the same time the second person of the Blessed Trinity that became incarnate in the Virgin Mary's womb and that he has a, a divine will and he has also a human will. But he has a divine person and he does not have a human person in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, the person is one. And that person is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. He assumed the human nature and he is forever, from eternity unto eternity, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, that is God himself. And Mary is the mother of God because she is the mother of Jesus and Jesus is God. Now, the fifth point about Jesus is that he is the son of God. This is probably the most important thing that we need to know about Jesus Christ. He is not only a prophet. The, the Muslim people, they identify Jesus as a prophet of Allah. Well, that's not what Jesus said about himself. He called himself the son of God and he called himself God. Hims God. He, he, he said about himself, I am, I am who I am. I am, I am God. And that's the reason why they killed him. And he's not the son of God, as we would call the angels. Sometimes angels are called sons of God, but, uh, but that's not the sense. The sense that Jesus is the son of God is that he has this unique and eternal relationship with God the Father. Because eternally he has been, and ever will be, the only begotten son of God. He is the only son of God. Of God, and that is attested throughout Scripture in the New Testament. For example, 
In the Gospel of St. John 1.14, it says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we saw His glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. That is John 1.14 again. He also says, God, this is probably the most famous quote in the, in the Gospel of St. John, uh, John 3.16. Jesus himself is saying, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. And that is probably the most famous. Everybody likes to, to know that God sent his son to save, to save me, not to condemn me. But then if we keep reading in that same passage of the gospel, we see later on, on verse 18, when he says, whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe in him is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. So refusing to believe that Jesus is the only Son of God, the eternal Son of God, the only begotten Son of the Father, is refusing salvation. When we refuse to believe that, we refuse to receive the salvation that God brought to us in Jesus Christ. Uh, why? Just because we refuse to accept the mystery? No, because if we refuse to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Son of God, Jesus Christ, that man that was born into history, if we refuse to acknowledge, his, acknowledge Him as the Son of God, we are excluding ourselves from salvation. We are closing the door before us to receive that salvation that Jesus has to offer. Because the condition for us to receive that salvation is to accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God. So this point is crucial for our own salvation and also for us understanding who Jesus Christ is. The eternal Son of the Father, the second person of the Blessed Trinity that became incarnate in history at the fullness of time from the Virgin Mary, and that died and rose again and went into heaven. And this takes us uh, to declare this uh, sixth point, I'm sorry, sixth point about Jesus, that Jesus is the Son of God, the eternal Son of the Father, but He is God Himself. And that's the, the whole mystery of the Blessed Trinity, that there is only one God, and the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. There are three persons, but it's only one God. And Jesus has the fullness of the divinity, as so does the Father, and so does the Holy Spirit. So that is the, 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 the sixth point, that Jesus is God himself. In the beginning, says St. John, in the verse 1-1, one, one, chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now here I want to point out that some, not some, I would say the Jehovah Witnesses, they, they change this verse of the gospel, of first, uh, the, the first chapter of St. John, verse 1. They change it to say that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was a God, you know, with a small g. And this is a great mistake. First of all, Greek doesn't have an indefinite article the, the, to say a God is incorrect because in Greek that word a does not exist. That's very simple to understand. Second, they dare to change sacred scripture to fit their beliefs. And that is, I, I don't want to see what's going to happen on the day of judgment. When they face the Lord and they say, we, we just thought that you didn't really mean to say that, that the word was God. So, so we change it, you know, so that, that we will not acknowledge Jesus as God himself. Well, that's a great, great mistake. Jesus is God himself. He is divine. He is God. And, and he said it here in, in the first, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I don't know how much clear you can get than that. And there's other passages in the gospel that says that Jesus Christ was God. For example, in the second, uh, in the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, when it says, Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. So th there again, Holy Scripture is giving testimony that Jesus Christ is God himself. Okay. 
enough of that point. There is, as I said, so much more to say, but we are going to keep it brief. And then the seventh point and the last point that I want to talk about today is that Jesus is Lord. What do, do we mean when we say that Jesus is Lord? We mean that he has the sovereignty of God himself, particularly after he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. What happened after he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven? That when he got there, God anointed him, gave him the power of the Holy Spirit, gave him the authority and the majesty of God himself in his sacred humanity. He went up to heaven. He did not share his humanity, but he took the humanity that he had assumed at the incarnation. He took it up to heaven and there as a man, as the God man, he presented himself before the Father. And the Father glorified Jesus Christ by seating him at his right hand, at his right hand. And therefore, Jesus Christ, as the God man, as a human being, as a man, he has received in his sacred humanity the majesty, the power, the authority of God himself. And I love this prayer from the divine office when it says, Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, we are already seated at your right hand. Why? Because he is sharing in our humanity. He is a member of our human family. And in Jesus Christ, man, the human race, is already seated at the right hand of God the Father. And that's what God had decided to do, to make the human being, the human race, to seat them at the right hand. Of, his, of the throne of God. Uh, <clears throat> and that is the glorification of Jesus Christ. So we have these seven points. Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Christ. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ is the Son of Mary. Jesus Christ is, <clears throat> is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is God himself, and Jesus Christ is Lord, having sovereignty over the whole universe, over the present, the past, or the future, over everything in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, over everything. Jesus Christ is, is Lord, is, which means to say Jesus Christ is God himself again. Well, let us rejoice that this Jesus that is so exalted at the right hand of the Father loves you, and loves me, loves each human person, and is willing to extend his salvation and to share with us uh, his divinity. Uh, so God bless you, and uh, please do pray for me. I will pray for you, and uh, arrivederci. See you next time. Bye-bye.